This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Microsoft Surface Pro 7. No, wait a minute. Wait, hold on, hold on, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 7. Okay, it's a joke, yes, but to make the point, Surface Pro 6 and Surface Pro 7, they have the same exact design. The only way you can tell them apart from the outside without looking under the kickstands and looking at the model number is looking at the side ports, because finally we have USB-C that replaces the mini display port, though it too can handle display port out. So I'm happy, happy, happy with that. Probably you are too. Alas, it's not Thunderbolt 3. Because Microsoft still thinks we should make do with the Surface dock that connects to the Surface Connect port, which is pretty old technology at this point, but it does have Ethernet and display out and USB ports. So, okay, yes, it works. The other update is Intel 10th generation CPUs. We're going to look at it now. So pricing remains the same, just like the design, as the previous version, but this time they're offering a Core i3 as the low-end model. Last year they started with the Core i5, and that was as low as you could go. So the Core i3 means that the base price for the lowest-end model is a bit lower. It's $749 with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD, which is, you know, if that's all you can afford, it's there for you, sort of. That's what Microsoft is saying. If you want the, the kind of nice, solid in-betweener model, it's still $1,199. And that gives you a Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. You can go all the way up to a Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD, and you can spend around $2,000. What's nice with the Intel 10th generation CPUs, which for the Core i5 and Core i7 are quad core, just like the previous generation, but now we have Intel Iris Plus graphics, which is more oomphy. It verges on NVIDIA MX150 low-end dedicated graphics. So this isn't going to rock your world. You're not going to be playing the latest Call of Duty or something like that on this 12.3 inch tablet. Let's be realistic here, but it does mean it'll give it a little extra pep to Photoshop. And if you're doing some video editing using Premiere, It'll help, and that's nice. And as ever, you know, you can moan and say, oh man, they're not doing anything new with the Surface line. It's still, in terms of design and what it can do, pretty incredible product. There aren't many products like it, despite the fact there are a lot of clones out there, including by major manufacturers like Dell and Lenovo. This thing is so small and so light. It's 1.7 pounds, which is like 770 grams without the not included still type cover but it's got the power of a nice high-end ultrabook inside for something that is great say you travel a lot in business it still fits on the tray table say you're going to new york city where the safes where you can lock in your stuff are so small about the only thing you can fit in there is a surface pro so i'm not going to poo poo on it too much despite the fact that yes they haven't redesigned it yes it's about time for that yes thunderbolt 3 or a new surface dock would be nice to see they are reaching the limitations of what Surface Connect can do in terms of docks and other things. So they do need to address these things. Yes, there is Surface Pro X, and we'll be reviewing that. That one ships on November 5th. And that one has a little bit more modern design. It has smaller bezels. They move up to 13 inches for the display size, which is nice. But the drawback with that one is going to be the fact that it's running on ARM, not an Intel processor. So basically a modified Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU. So you have limited compatibility with existing Windows EXE programs. Whereas Surface Pro, being a little marvel of a tablet that's about the same size as a bigger iPad Pro, can run any Windows application, you name it, that any other laptop can run. So that's the pros for it. The other pro is the pen, which has not changed. It's the same pen they were selling with last year's model, but it just gets better and better. The uh, Intrigue technology behind this, which is now Microsoft Pen Protocol, They've gotten rid of most of the jitter in lines when you're doing slow diagonal lines, which also means for those of you who are writing handwriting slowly, very curvy handwriting, it's going to look smoother and nicer. And for those of you who are using it for art, it becomes more and more viable. I wasn't thrilled with Surface other than the fact that I could run Photoshop anywhere on it and do some serious digital painting, and I am a digital painter. But now it's pretty darn good. The pressure curves on it are also very nice. No complaints. The type covers are the same as last year. You can have the basic black one, which you can see here, that's $130. And if you want more nifty-ish colors, you've got the higher end $159.99, call it $160 type covers. Also, you can get the basic black one with a fingerprint scanner, which brings that one back up to $160. The pen is still $100. So as ever with the Surface Pro family, you know the drill. It's not just the price of the unit, it's the price of the unit plus the keyboard and the pen, unless you're upgrading from a Surface Pro. 
5 and Surface Pro 6, whatever, and you still have those pieces of kit. But Black Friday is just around the corner. And that's one of the nice things about the Surface Pro is usually they are the big lost leaders for a lot of retailers. And you'll see bundles with the pen, with the keyboard, all that sort of thing, and some big price cuts. And while most Microsoft Surface products are very expensive because they don't really want to stomp on all of their PC manufacturing partners and make something super affordable, you get the idea. I, this is the one where they do. They want you to get hooked into the Surface experience and products. So you might actually find this at a better price. Wi-Fi has improved here too. So no more old Marvel Avastar Wi-Fi, which nobody really loved. We have Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 for better performance. Yay. Currently there is no LTE option though. Just like last year's model, the Core i5 is fanless. Well, now the new Core i3 is also fanless. So only if you move up to the Core i7 do you get a fan, which really isn't that loud. So that's pretty neat because these are not usually passively cooled CPUs, the Core i5 CPUs. Yet Microsoft has done some pretty fancy stuff with cooling. Again, just like last generation, so that you don't have to have a fan. So those of you who really hate noise, yeah. Now I was using it for painting in Adobe Photoshop with a PSD file with a bunch of layers and it got warm to the touch, but being that it's almost November, it actually was kind of pleasant that it was warm. In the summer, it probably still wouldn't be that bad. It doesn't get burning hot, let's put it that way. And it doesn't thermal throttle a lot. Performance on this is a little bit better than the 8th generation, which we would like to see in terms of CPU performance. In terms of GPU performance, like I said, you're looking at a more significant boost there. Is it a reason to upgrade from a Surface Pro 6? Not really so much. Even if you want that USB port, I would wait and see what they're going to do with Surface Pro 8. But if you're coming from an older model like Surface Pro 4 or Surface Pro 5, certainly the jump in cores then is going to make it worthwhile. And still, even with the been there, done that design, it's still pretty unique and aspirational. And the drawbacks are still there. The kickstand that can dig into your legs a little bit, the not serviceable design. At least Surface Pro X has a accessible SSD for upgrades, although it's a pretty obscure kind of SSD you won't find easily. With this one, you know the drill. You're going to take it to a service center and they have to suck the screen off of it to get to the internals on. This time around we get a 65 watt charger in the box, not a 45 watt, so that's good. A little bit faster charging. It's the same design with the USB-A port on, so you can also charge your phone. Now, Microsoft claims 10 and a half hours of battery life versus 13 and a half hours of battery life for Surface Pro 6, but this is because they also changed their metric, the kind of tests they were running. For Surface Pro 6, it was playing a local video. And that's all that they were doing. This time around, some mix of productivity use, having eight browser tabs open, you get the idea. So don't be too scared about that. I'm finding that battery life has been about the same for our Core i5 model with eight gigs of RAM and the 256 gig SSD. So that means about seven hours on average with 200 nits of brightness on this. The display on this is the same as the last generation. Not much to see here. It's still a lovely display. There are there's no OLED 12.3 inch display on the market for them to use, but you know what? This one is pretty color accurate from the from the factory. It's got good color gamut, full sRGB. We're not talking wide gamut here, but it's a pleasing, sharp, high resolution three by two aspect ratio display, which I know a lot of you love that three by two aspect ratio display, and I can't blame you. A lot less scrolling because you've got more height on the product. There are competitors, obviously the iPad Pro, particularly the bigger model, and really it depends on whether you need full Windows programs or whether you're happy with mobile OS programs. There's a Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, which isn't as big a screen, but the drawback there is not so many Android optimized tablets. Then there's the Dell Latitude 7200, which is a perfectly good alternative. It even has Thunderbolt 3, and it is serviceable if you want to take it apart to fix it or upgrade it. It has a lower resolution display though. The ThinkPad Tablet X, it's very nice, but the $2,500 to about $3,400 price means that the Surface Pro suddenly looks more affordable. If we want to talk about that iPad again, I've done Smackdowns in the past with these. There are some very good art apps for those of you who are buying this for art, like Procreate. Obviously, you can run MS Office on your iPad. Uh, the one thing I would say is if you're a straight out just drawing person for art, yeah, then the iPad is great with Procreate. If you're more of a concept art professional illustrator who does a lot of concept art or matte painting, honestly, Photoshop is still the, the go-to program for that and a lot easier. And we still don't have full Photoshop yet on the iPad. We've been promised it, but we don't have it yet. So that's the Microsoft Service Pro 7 for sure. This is the Service Pro 7. <laughs> 
And USB-C port, thank you, very good. 10th generation CPUs for a little graphics jump. Also, thank you. A bit better microphones for those of you who like Cortana and Alexa and all that sort of thing. Like I said, if you're coming, if you've already got a Surface Pro 6, not so much. A USB-C port is nice and a little bit better graphics is nice, but not enough really to upgrade. But if you're coming from an older model, like a Surface Pro 4 or 5, you're going to get quad-core performance here as long as you don't go for that core i3. And really good pen performance, surprisingly good pen performance on this. And the most portable Ultrabook on the planet because it's a tablet that turns into an Ultrabook and it's super small and light, and that part is still cool. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.